Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Yesterday we had like a little party, slight hangover. I'm feeling 90% okay. Vanessa, 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 mm -hmm. can you raise your arm? Vanessa's not feeling that good. But yeah, since it's like a, a hangover day, we'll do a hangover story time. Today I would love to focus on something important and crucial for every musician and producer out there. And that is how to actually transition from doing it as a hobby to actually making it full time. So for me personally, it, it all started very early on. I did, I, I started DJing with like 13, 14, 15, first club, 16, already almost every weekend. And that was mostly like worth of mouth, like just talking to people, telling them I'm a DJ, making sure to give them mixtapes back then on, on CD. I had to burn CDs and I was like giving everyone a CD, which was back then something rare to have free music mixed already. And that's how everything got started. And back then I was still living with my parents, everything was fine. And I was making like a decent amount of money, actually enough to support myself. But I was still young, still living with my parents. So it was a good time. That was like the first transition. I had then like a, a quite severe cut when I moved, or I actually didn't move, but I, I started studying somewhere else in Cologne, which is like half an hour away. It was horrible, I hated it, which also taught me a lot about what I don't wanna be. I was studying international business, what was it, international business consulting. <sighs> Not my thing. Usually the solution was just fire a bunch of people, save money, and that's that's how you make money. And that wasn't something I could really like be part of. So I, I back then started producing more and more music. I already had some releases, decent releases. Um, I think one or two even got into the style charts in the top 100 of Beatport, which still doesn't mean anything. But that was the time where I was like, hmm, I don't want to do that university thing. I don't want to work as a consultant ever. So why not just focus on the music? And I did it in a sneaky way. I didn't tell anyone. I still pretended to go to university, but I was actually sitting either at home or somewhere outside or at friends' places just with my laptop and headphones and was making music which didn't make any money. I didn't have any further releases, nothing really happened. And university just went downhill, like pretty hardcore. I didn't, like, I didn't pass a single test. I had maybe like five hours per week where I was actually attending any kind of class, which my parents eventually found out and weren't really happy about. So my last chance was then Vanessa, was back then. Vanessa? Yeah. Do you remember back then? I didn't listen. She didn't listen, okay. Anyways, back then um, she was also studying and she had to do, she was studying in the Netherlands. Fenlo, right? Yeah. Fenlo. And she, Fonsi, I think was the name of the school. Fonsi? Fonsi? Fonsi. Fonsi. Um, she had to do an abroad internship for half a year. And abroad, since she was studying in the Netherlands, was Germany was also part of it. So I told her, if you, if you do that internship in Berlin, I will come with you. So of course she found something nice in Berlin. I went with her to Berlin. And like two weeks before we actually were moving to Berlin, I met through a friend, a friend of, of him. And that guy was actually part of an agency that does booking and magazines and sneak like they do a bunch of stuff they actually sit in the same or back then they had their offices in the same building as beatport and they were also responsible for the melt festival so he was he was very friendly a very good guy and he was the one that that I, I talked to him a little i told him i'm moving to berlin and if he could maybe just like help me a little and he was really friendly, so two weeks later we moved to Berlin, I contacted him and he showed me the entire city, he showed me all of the important people. Within the first month he took like three of my songs, sent it to one of his best friends that was the owner or, yeah, I think the owner or part of the owner team of Get Physical, which is or is still and was back then even bigger 
big dance label for underground Berlin kind of music. I would even argue back then in Berlin, the biggest, most influential label. It was owned, I think it's still owned by, by Bukashe, DJT and, and Mandy. So um, yeah, he sent him my music and, and he liked it. But since I was a new artist, I didn't release on the big label. I released on a sub label called Kindish. I think one EP with two songs, which went pretty okay. That wasn't the big thing actually. It was more that I now could tell everyone that I'm releasing on the sub label of Get Physical and connected through this a lot better in Berlin and eventually met people that were like, hey, I'm a DJ, I want to produce music, can you help me? So I co-produced, started also ghost producing and that was actually like the first time where things started moving. We then moved away from Berlin, I think, I mean, I love the city, but it's it's very hipster, everyday party, no focus. So that wasn't for me, but it was good to get connected through that half year. Vanessa, you also didn't really like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vanessa was like, she hated it. Yeah, you hated it, right? Yeah, yeah. kind of. <laughs> Would you ever move back? I think I, I wouldn't. No, okay. So we moved back here to Dusseldorf and um, actually got then later on an apartment together, but it was good. I had the connections and I ever since I went to Berlin like three or four times a year to keep these connections up. And I had people that were like, hey, can you make a tech house track? And I was sitting there and I'm like, tech house is easy. Throw in five loops, put a kick underneath arrange it a little, some white noise here and there, and you're done. And that's how I actually, like that was the transition point for me to making music full time as a ghost producer, co-producer for other people. I still made my own music, but that wasn't a big income source. And also DJing faded away, like all of the connections I had from back in the days, most of them like moved away, the clubs have changed. So that's where I lost the connection to, to DJing a lot and touring. And after doing this for three years, um, which made a decent amount of money, I could live of it, not, not like nice and big and like having a studio like this or anything, but uh, I was happy. I was making my music, I was making it full time. People started taking me serious. People always asked me a lot what I'm doing, how I'm making money. And that was like one of the initial thoughts of actually starting making these vlogs to share with my family and friends what I'm doing on a daily basis. So they don't always ask me. Plus I then also had like, I had some success with my productions for other people. They had success actually, they started touring which I always wanted and I got a little frustrated why make music for other people and they have the big success. So I, I said to myself, okay, let's start this video thing. You love filming, you love editing. It's an added benefit to your music. You explain to your family and friends what you're doing. And on top of that, announce that you're stopping to ghost produce. Make it public so you're not tempted to do it again. And make sure you make 24 seven your own music so you don't even have time for ghost producing. That initial phase was hard because I was back to zero almost. I had a little saved up but I had to work fast. There was a lot of pressure, which helped me a lot to actually do the stuff that was necessary. That was like the third time I transitioned to making music full time. It was the hardest, the toughest, but I still don't regret it. Not a single second. It was hard, very hard, especially the vlog, like doing a daily vlog on top. I, had, I did a daily vlog for an entire year and didn't have a thousand subscribers. <laughs> I made 365 videos, not even having a thousand subscribers. So if you want to go back, I link it down below the playlist with like the first year of vlogging. Most of the videos don't even have any, any amount of views, but it's funny to go back and see myself being cringy. English is a lot worse, studio a lot smaller, the music isn't there yet. But it's funny, you can see the last four years and 303 days of me evolving as an artist. And I think there's a lot to learn. So if you're interested, go check it out. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for, for being part of the story of how I made it to doing this full time. Tomorrow, another vlog here on this channel. 
probably, maybe, in the studio. Am I in the studio tomorrow? I don't think so. No, tomorrow not in the studio. Let's see if Vanessa has anything else to add to the story. No. Are you feeling better? I don't feel as bad as you tell people. I'm just <laughs> tired. <laughs> tired? You want to go back home, sleep? Yeah, and I do have to do Pamela Ralph. If you want to know who or what that is, probably someone will explain it in the comments. So maybe you guys will like it. Yeah, uh, or yeah. Her. her. Yeah. Anyways, see you tomorrow again. Cheers. Yeah.